everybody. It is July 13th of 10 a.m. in the morning on this Thursday, 2023. Yay, rain. Yeah, rain over here. Most likely that's going on right now. Um, let's see what's going on right now. Uh, they start blasting. We don't have 110 heat to rig outside. But other than that, we're okay. Okay, we'll talk numbers real quick, everybody, and then we will get on with the uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit this one first. Um, oh, man, just it's just five away. It might be able to make it because I think it's still in theaters. Well, I don't know which one you're talking about. Uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie right now, everyone domestically has made $573,812,245. Internationally, $771,472,970 for a worldwide total of $1,345,285,215. Just $5 million away for uh, 1.35. Wow. I, that's what I want to do. I want to make 1.35, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, that's a Mario brother. Uh huh. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is domestically made three hundred fifty-seven million eight hundred thirty-four thousand one hundred eight dollars. Internationally, four hundred eighty-three thousand nine hundred twenty-four thousand three hundred thirty-eight dollars for a worldwide total of eight hundred forty-one thousand seven hundred fifty-eight. Uh, oh, let me let me reset that. Uh, eight hundred forty-one million seven hundred fifty-eight thousand four hundred forty-six dollars. That ain't bad. No, uh, it's it starting worked. to go down now. Oh yeah, but it, it hit seven hundred and fifty. I like for it to make at least uh eighty-five million. Yeah, yeah, it's doing better. Eight hundred fifty. Yeah, better. I thought it was going to do that. Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Domestically, three hundred sixty million four hundred forty thousand forty five thousand one hundred twenty nine dollars. Internationally, two hundred eighty four thousand six hundred and uh two hundred eighty four million six hundred and twelve thousand five hundred forty eight dollars for a worldwide total of six hundred and forty five million fifty seven thousand six hundred seventy seven dollars. Not bad. No, not bad at all. I think a lot of what hurts Spider Man though, uh, especially when some of those articles came out saying that they're oh well this character represents this 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 and that really hurt it in other countries. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's still doing good, but. Oh, speaking of good. Oh. Uh, how is uh, Indy doing? Indy. Indiana Jones. Hold on, I'm gonna do Transformer okay. first. Oh. Definitely. Transformers Rise of the Beast domestically done $148,274,679. Internationally, $261,000,000 for a worldwide total of um, $409,274,679. I'm actually happy it made that much. I really am. Yeah. I know it's about to come out on streaming uh, here soon. Where they people can buy it and watch it like on Voodoo, yeah, and everything. <clears throat> That's fine. So mm-hmm. it'll, it'll does what? that count? It might. <sighs> they had a lot of other films, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, Transformers, in my opinion, did dang good. Yeah. Uh. Oh my God. Oh God! This hurts me. The Flash domestically, all right, and it's God. It's been out for over a month, almost a month. And domestically, a hundred and five million seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand six hundred eighty-five dollars. Internationally, a hundred and fifty-six million eight hundred thousand for a worldwide total of two hundred sixty-two thousand five hundred seventy-seven. Uh, no, five. Uh, Five hundred and seventy-seven thousand six hundred and eighty-five dollars, just barely over a quarter, uh, a quarter of a billion, just barely. And what do you say, dud? Uh, yeah. Uh, did it make its money back? 
I think it barely did. Holy guacamole. I mean, it's just barely doing better than uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which made two hundred and eight million. Uh, well, it's still in theaters in some areas. Well, no, 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 it's not. Uh, which did two hundred eight million one hundred seventy seven thousand twenty six dollars, and the thing. It's not everybody's cup of tea. That's not in the top tier of stories either. Uh, it made it. Well, it made fifty million. It, it was one hundred fifty million to make and and everything. Yeah. That was a good film, though. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. If they come out with another one, uh, yeah, we're going. Kind of wish we saw that one in theater. Oh well. Yeah, Indiana Jones, that was something, um... Man, we had talked about that before. Like, don't get me wrong, everybody. We were kind of looking forward to it. Uh... The cost... Oh, my gosh, the cost was $295 million. Ouch. Oh, that was just the cost. Ouch. Ooh, that's still not good. Domestically, a hundred and twenty-eight million eight hundred and twenty-one thousand two hundred fourteen dollars. Internationally, a hundred and twenty-seven million a hundred and fifty thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars. Uh, for a worldwide total of two hundred and fifty-five million nine hundred and seventy-one thousand nine hundred seventy-nine dollars. Now, everyone, it's been out since June third. Uh. June 30th. Basically, what, three weeks? Yeah, and it hasn't broken even yet. Ooh. Rumor Ooh. has it, because of this, and I have not been able to find the article that Lucasfilms is done with Caitlin Kennedy after this. Like, she screwed this up and everything. And don't get me wrong, everybody. I mean, the, the film looked okay, but... I th from what I heard, it did the whole thing where Indiana... Indiana Jones is old, and now the girl is the better, you know. Uh, I love to see work. Yeah, and the whole thing is a lot of audiences don't like, you know, some audiences don't mind that if it's done right. I mean, you can have a, a female lead, you know, come in and take over where a guy was, but it's more like, you know, I guess the best way to put it is, uh, it's how it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing I, I saw, I did think of that. Another thing I've talked to you, we talked about lengthly about it. I think they released it at the wrong time of the year. Mm-hmm. I truly do. I don't know what their thinking on that was, but that's just me. Yeah, so, uh, and, you know, th th that that movie should have came out. A good back-to-school movie. Yeah, I, I mean, you have Blue Beetle coming out next month and Ninja Turtles. Uh, a lot of people are not familiar with Blue Beetle. I'm like, that's a Blue Beetle. Oh, well, yeah, and it's going with the fourth incarnation of Blue Beetle. Yeah. Because the first one, everybody was back in. Back in the golden age of comics, the Silver Age one, um, he had a, like little powers from the Scarab yeah. that he had. Yeah. The third Blue Beetle, uh, uh, which was I think the nephew of the second one, Ted. Uh, he he didn't have any powers. He was smart and everything, and he supposedly worked with Batman on a lot of things, and then. The fourth Blue Beetle is the one who gets the Scarab Jaime, and it turns it into like a bio suit. And that came out like 2007. The character's not bad, but. And I'm not saying. Relatively unknown. Yeah. 
Well, here's another issue. Also, is after the after the debacle that was Flash. Yeah. That's gonna hurt a lot of people. I hate saying it. It doesn't have the same. Pull, they don't have the same pull power. And yeah, I, people knew who Iron Man was when he first came out. All right, but then when they, uh, you know, I, I hate saying it. Robert Downey Jr. made that role. When people said, no, Robert did really good with that role because Robert was an established actor and everything. You've got to have somebody who's going to bring in the pool of, of, of a fr- if you want to start a big, huge franchise. Uh, Ezra Miller did not help out. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm mad about the DC Ma- Michael Keaton uh, Batman Beyond film being canceled. Because uh, everyone, I'm a huge Batman Batman Returns fan, okay? Uh, yeah, so are me and other folks. Yeah. I mean, that that's the Batman... I mean, I grew up with Adam West, too. And I loved the Adam West seri- you know, series. And I loved the Adam West movie. And it's, it was, you know... A little cheesy. Yeah, it was a little cheesy, but, I mean, it was enjoyable to watch. Well, it was a fun movie. And fun series to watch. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I like the Michael Keaton Batman film and Batman Returns. I think that those two films are just iconic in, in a big sense. Uh, I would love, like I said, I, I've said on other podcasts, I'd love for them to do one more with him. You know. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, I don't, yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh Oh, oh, yeah, you got Expendables coming out in September, you know? Yeah. Oh, we're going to go see that. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> this That's is Stallone. Good old fashioned action. And this is like Stallone's like last like action movie, so I, I got to go see it, everybody. Uh, yeah, he ain't no kid either. Uh-uh. Well, I think it's going to do good also in the theaters because, you know, one, it is going to have the pull power of Stallone and some of the other actors and actresses that are in it. But not only that, what I think is. You know, and you were going to talk about is like the writer, uh, you know, the writer strike. There's still some issues with that. They say they've come to an agreement. Not not every writer is on board with it, and now they're about to have a uh, actor strike. That's, well, Stallone, he is a writer, producer, and director, as well as an actor. Right, but I'm He's talking a, right. So, to do that movie. so I mean, in my opinion, you know, going back to the Indiana Jones thing, is probably should have released it, you know, like, well, this writer strike and all this, we're not going to be able to do this, this, and this, and everything. Well, I could have made it, put it in the can, released it later. Right. Well, you can't do it in November because you're going to have a Marvel movie out in November, and you didn't, and I'm sorry, you cannot release it in December because what's come out in December? Ghostbusters. Yeah. I mean, come on, let's be honest. You can't compete with, you know, Personally, I would have shot for like September. Yeah, but I mean that that, that that's me and you. Yeah. Uh. So, and you said something like like I said before, because you, you were telling me about a writer's well, not not a writer's strike. A eh? uh, actors are planning on going on strike now. Yeah. Okay. Like like what? That's all I know. I don't know any of the details. I'm sure it's in conjunction with writers. Now, I can understand on some... Oh, solidarity thing to an extent. Well, I mean, but that... That type of thing, I do understand. Because you, you want to make sure that, you know, you're sticking together, which which that's fine. Now, if it is something with the AI thing, because I know there's been couples too, so we'll bring this person back to life and, you know... Have an AI, you know, put them in, you know. I know they joked about doing that to John Wayne, and I guarantee you that movie will. Yeah, you don't mess with the dude. No, that movie will. That movie will bomb. Uh, and Except I, for the folks that didn't grow up with him. Except for the under thirty crowd. Don't know well, no, it's so cool. Is. No, that's a disrespect. How the? I mean, like, If you're bringing a, an, an actor or character back from the dead, there's a there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. The wrong way to do it is let it be all CGI. The right way to do it is like what they did in Ghostbusters. 
Afterlife. Yeah. Uh, they had Reitman uh, put makeup on and everything to look like Egon. That's why he didn't say anything. And he did. He looked like Harold Ramis. I mean, they did fantastic on that. Yeah, that was really good. But at the way, it was also because, you know, Reitman was f also friends with Harold and everything. So it was a way to finish Harold. Yeah, paying homage to him. It was a way to finish Egon's story. And everything, you know, paying homage, saying, you know, so, so long, my friend, you know, hey, we did it and everything, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen with. Okay, I hope we have enough. I don't know what's going to happen with that aspect. I mean probably bring out a bunch of films that they don't oh well we can release this film out and or something it would be a bunch of indie films e either indie films or they'll do like a special re-release of a film for the love of god do not let it be avatar uh no i don't think disney would do that uh james cameron might want to we need to bring avatar back on the holidays take down all other films and everything you know I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. What else was I gonna say? I was about to go to my tangent again. Ooh. Feel good to me. Yeah, that was my lower left sacrum. Oh, that felt good. Uh. I saw a little bit more of the for Ninja Turtles. It doesn't look bad. It. it <laughs> I know it's not the Ninja Turtles I grew up with, in a sense, because to me, to me, this is probably the first one they actually act more like thirteen and fourteen year olds, in my opinion. Because all the other ones, I always felt like seven, eight, and nine. No, teenage mutant teenagers. Okay, okay. Why would you say they're seven, eight, and nine? The way they act. No, Dad, that's the way thirteen, fourteen year olds act now. I'm not even joking. You're not. Okay. But compared to the Ninja Turtles of like the other ser series. Like the original series, yeah, they were kept on the ground. Under, they were pretty much raised old, old school. And if you guys know, you know, they, they I would say they're about, probably about 16, 17. The one in the I'm trying to keep from yawning, everybody. It's your fault. The ones in the 2002 series, I would say they're about 17, 18. Yeah. And they're 20s near the end of the series. Yeah. Um, and then the 2012, I would say they're about 15 when it started. That's the way it is, because they, you know... But these are definitely like 13 year olds, 13, 14 year olds. Yeah. It doesn't look bad. They said if it does do good, there will be a sequel. I don't know. Just depends. I mean, we might go see it. I mean, it, I mean. Depending on what else is going on. Yeah. And then. I don't know. Like I said, depending on what's going on. Uh, not much, really. Oh, uh, I oh, uh, one bit of sad news though. Uh, you heard about the M Mulan actress, right? The what? The live action Mulan actress. No. Uh, let's see. Do you know? I heard about it. Uh, her name was um. Uh, Lu. I'm probably mispronouncing this, everybody. Uh, it's spelled L-I-U, so I'm, I want to say it's probably like Liu uh, Y-I-F-E-I. -E uh, I might even try to say her last name, okay? Uh, she passed this past week. Really? Yeah, uh, they said suicide. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so...
Okay, good. Uh... So, I don't know what happened. They're not really... They're saying that she committed suicide. Uh... Okay. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, my bad. No, she's alive. Coco Lee, iconic Hong Kong singer and Mulan voice actress. See, they're they're not being they're saying it's one or the other. Not being real clear in their reporting. Mm mm. I'll find out more. My bad. So it's it's Coco Lee. Oh, who who was the voice actress? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I have to say, really, the only thing that I know going on right now, entertainment wise, and this gets in more to the video games is how a lot of people are uh, getting upset with the, how the games are becoming so massively big now that it's almost impossible for you to actually have more than one game on a console. Are you just about to let it go? Yeah, because, I mean, some games are so freaking huge and everything. You know, you get the extra content and, you know, like there's certain ones on my, you know, I got two PlayStations and there's certain ones on like one PlayStation, you know, it's like if I take it off, I lose some content because it was pre-order only and you can't get it after, you know, certain time period. Right. Uh, and then, all right. So like, let's say you have a one terabyte hard drive. All yeah. right. You buy one game. It's 500 gigabytes. Wait a minute, 500 gigabytes, and then it does like an update or two, so you might have seven, 800 gigabytes. Games don't need to be that massive. And they're like, and then of course people are like, this is why I bought a PC, you know. I don't have five, six thousand dollars. Every time you turn around, I buy another one. Right. I mean, it's expensive. And I think. You don't have any way to download it onto a, onto a storage unit. Okay, so. Storage device. Right. Once you buy an external hard drive, that's why they have my PlayStation, my, one of my PlayStations. Yeah. And you it, can't put it in the cloud and download it. No, no, you can't. Now, something they did do, which I agree the price is a little high in some areas on some things, but then it did have some extra content, but that was. Uh, that was like a free download that just got added on, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, the Spider-Man game is pretty big. I mean, you've seen how big it is. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. And when I bought the edition with all the DLC, and the DLC was good. Okay. The Miles Morales game, Dad, was in, was supposed to be the was supposed to be the last DLC pack. They decided to release it in this form instead. I'm glad they did. It is a, it's not as long as the other one, but I would rather them sit there and be like, hey, instead of releasing, uh, you know, like this whole big other section and everything, well, we're going to wait like a year or two after the game's going on. We're going to release this more like an extended part of the game, you know, kind of like a mini part two instead of being yeah. a DLC. Part two. Right. Same game next chapter. Right. Now, I didn't mind. No, that, no, there was nothing wrong with that. You know, especially, you know, like, I think what we talked about, how the, they're supposed to add queens in the next one. Well, of course, it's PlayStation 5, too. Uh, 
And I mean, it just looks. Whew. I mean, I know a lot of people are complaining about it, and then you got sit there, and you got Nintendo, uh, whose games are not as big. No, they're they're not, and they're selling like hotcakes. I mean, you've seen some of the Nintendo games I uh, I yeah. bought for the Switch yeah. and the Wii. Can you see how they're easy to easy to pick up and how fun they are? Yeah. Well, if it ain't fun, why why mess with it? I mean, I like some of the complicated games. Like I I enjoy playing Final Fantasy fourteen with uh with somebody uh you know when I can play it. But I mean, it 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 is a massive game. It is easy to play, but I mean, it's massive. Uh, I like big games, but I don't like really huge big games. And I think that's one of the issues a lot I've talked to a lot of friends about is how games are getting so big and all this other stuff is, it, I mean, it pretty much feels like you're going to have to have a room with a computer this big of today's standards just to have one freaking game. Okay, everyone, sorry about that. Batteries just died. So, um, what were you saying? It gives no meaning to the term game room. You literally have to have a room just for... The whole, the... Uh, for one game. Yeah. Go back to, like, the uh, late 40s and early 50s when they had their... Massive super computer. Yeah. yeah. Which now is palm size. Yeah. Oh, I know, but, I mean... That that's the whole thing is what I'm talking about is like like I'll I'll admit you know getting into it do I want a PlayStation Five event yeah I want one eventually I mean, there's a couple of games on there that I actually want do I need it right now no wants and needs are two different things I mean I can tell you I, yeah I mean I can tell you on top of my head a couple of games I'd like off of it you want Mortal Kombat yeah. Uh, I still got to play through, finish up 11 and finish some stuff on X and 9. Um, there's a new Naruto game coming out. Uh, a new Ninja Storm game. So yeah, I want that one. Ratchet and Clank. Of course, Spider-Man 2. <laughs> and, okay, so you've, you see me play the Naruto games, right? Yes. Rumor Control has it, they're making a Bleach game like that, also. So, yeah. But, I mean... It's not like you have a $5,000 a week paycheck coming in, all you have to do is sit around and play games in the basement all day long. No, I couldn't do that. I know. Some people can. I could probably, if I had to play... I was like, oh, you got to play 40 hours a week and everything, play games. Best thing you'd want to say when you're off time. <laughs> Dadgum right. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm done with work for today. Turn it off, go do a workout and do some other things. Go play in the yard. Yeah, I would. Weekends, yeah, definitely. Why don't you play video games on the weekend? Uh-huh. Want you play video games? Want to go play, play? No, I play video games on uh, at work. If I play any video games, it's like the old arcade games. I don't play the. <laughs> I play pinball. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, that's all I got. I don't know if anything else is going on. No, I don't either. Uh, well, I did hear one thing. What? The new Green Lantern. Mm -hmm going to be Nathan Fallon. Yeah, he's supposed to be doing... Uh, the, because he's a good actor. Oh, yeah, he's definitely a good actor. But he's supposed to be doing a cocky Green Lantern. He's not Hal Jordan. No, no, he's not Hal Jordan. Um, because there's multiple Green Lanterns, if you guys don't know. Hal Jordan is actually the second Green Lantern. Um, then, because the original Green Lantern uh, wore a red shirt, um had a cape and he was part of the Justice Society of America back in the 1940s and 50s. 
uh, his power ring was actually different. It was it was a different form of power compared to the other Green Lanterns. Yeah. Um, then you had John Stewart, which everyone knows. Uh, which I hate I hate throwing a, the Black uh, Green Lantern, which if you guys watch Justice League and Justice yeah. League Unlimited, you knew him from that. He's a good character. Uh, I really like him. And then uh, Kyle Reidner was the um, one after Hal Jordan. And then this one, Guy Gardner, is another one. That's who he's playing. He's playing Guy Gardner. Yeah. So, it, it, Guy Gardner's, he's kind of the cocky Green Lantern. He's tough, but he, you know, kind of hot-headed. Yeah. So, but, uh, we'll just have to see how the DC stuff goes about. I think the only thing we're going to go see from DC is probably Batman. Well, we're going to see the Batman. Uh huh. As long as James Gunn doesn't get a hold of the Batman, I'm gonna make up more of this and this compared to the first film. You, know, you need to stay away from that. I don't think I don't I don't think he's gonna be able to because the such massive success of that film. Speaking of which, we got that on uh, DVD Blu-ray. Got that special edition. We yeah. need to sit down and watch it with mom. Yeah, I think she'd like it. Mm hmm. Sit down long enough. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. With that being said, we're done for the day. Uh, thank you for listening to us. I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Try to stay cool out there. Don't get heat exhaustion. Don't drink too much water. Drink just enough. Drink, drink it throughout the day. Don't try to gulp it down. Uh, let's see. And stay dry. Yeah, stay dry. Uh, uh, remember to like and subscribe to us here at Nurse with the Cause. It really does help us out. We have also have a Facebook page. Uh, keep comments clean. Uh, that's all I have for today. Anything that we're done, we're out. <laughs>